Today in this great nation of ours, we remember those who have served our country as president. And oftentimes, the secular world can point to the spiritual world. What we experience here in this realm can help us have a deeper and greater understanding of what happens in the realm of the spirit. Because truly what happens here on earth is intended to mirror not only what is in heaven, but to lead us to heaven. For example, the presidency. If we think of the president, typically we think of him in the Oval Office. And when we see him in the Oval Office, he usually is not standing. Generally, he is seated. And he is seated in the president's chair. No one else would sit in the president's chair. It's reserved for him and for him alone, and primarily for those times when he either is addressing the nation or is signing executive orders or the such. It is generally his governing role that is represented by that chair, such that when individuals see the Oval Office and they see his chair, they recognize his authority, the seat of his authority, if you will. And my dear friends of Christ, this points in, I think, a powerful way, or at least a, a relatable way, to what we see in every one of our churches. Enter any Catholic church and you will see three significant, essential, and indispensable pieces of holy furniture. The first and primary of which is the altar. That foreshadows the eschatological heavenly banquet that we will please God experience for all eternity. The second piece of sacred furniture is the ambo. It is that place from which the Word of God is proclaimed and preached. And the third essential and indispensable piece of sacred furniture is the presider's chair, also known as the celebrant's chair. But my dear friends, you may notice if you have a chance to look at any of the liturgical texts or, for example, even the Roman Missal, you'll notice it will say, not necessarily priest, it will say celebrant or presider. The priest or the bishop, the one who presides over the mass, sits in that presider's chair. A deacon won't sit in it, just like the vice president won't sit in the president's chair. A lay person or a lector, for example, or an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion will not sit in the presider's chair. Just like anyone on the president's cabinet will not sit in the president's chair. That presider's chair is reserved solely for the one who is presiding over the mass. And that is for this distinct reason. The priest and bishop are ordained with three munera, or three charisms. The charism to teach, the charism to govern, and the charism to sacramentalize. The responsibility that every priest and every bishop has is to teach the faith, is to govern a people, and is to bring them into holiness, to sacramentalize them, to shepherd them toward Christ, toward heaven. So the three charisms of every priest and of every bishop, to teach, to govern, to shepherd. Saints in the making. The presider's chair represents not only the spiritual authority that the priest or bishop has, but also his august and irreplaceable 
indispensable responsibility for the spiritual care and well-being of those in his charge and under his care. That chair is a visible reminder of what God has given to this man, this ordained man, this priest, this bishop, that he might bring his people safely to the shores of heaven. So my dear friends of Christ, as we celebrate President's Day today, pray for all of our presidents, our current president, our past presidents, that they might all know or have known and love and have loved and serve and have served God as he intends. Because remember, here we are called to mirror what occurs in heaven. But as you're praying for the presidents, pray also for priests and for bishops. We who preside at the sacred mass, at the beautiful, wonderful, great gift that God gives to us in the mass itself. And each time you enter the church and you see the presider's chair, remember, it is a sign of authority, but it is also a sign of the priest and bishop's great responsibility and privilege of teaching, of governing, and of shepherding. My dear friends of Christ, please pray for us priests, the bishops. We are in great need of your prayers and your support, and we can only do what we do by making space for grace.